Switch today and join the thousands of Irish homes and businesses sourcing their power from 100% green energy. Get your 26% discount today. Free phone 1800 818 466. This is a great deal. This is Generation Green. EAB 879 euro 22 cent. Offer from 20th November 2019. Rates followed from 3rd of December 2018. Subject to change. One year standard unit rate discount for new home electricity customers on direct debit and e-bill. For details of T's and C's, EAB, exit fees, standing charges, cssceatricity.com. Cocooning. We all know it makes sense, but it can be tough, especially if you're a grandparent missing your grandkids. <laughs> At Family Friendly HQ, Ireland's trusted parenting community, we want to help. So we've teamed up with Children's Books Ireland to launch a new video just for grandparents. It's a step-by-step -step video guide on how to read books with your grandchildren using online technology. There's also a reading hub with suggestions for recommended books. So stay safe and enjoy reading together while staying apart. Check out our free video guide at familyfriendlyhq.ie. Hashtag share a story. Football on Off The Ball. With Paddy Power, the greatest football partnership since Jeff and Heskey. All right, you're very welcome back. It is Thursday's Off The Ball. John Giles is with us on the line. Evening, John. Evening, Nathan. Uh, we'll get to your Arsenal eleven in just a moment, but obviously since we were last on air last week, uh, the news that Norman Hunter, unfortunately, has contracted coronavirus uh, emerged and news today that he's severely unwell in hospital. I know as well as been teammates, you've been very close friends down through the years. Obviously a very yeah. worrying time. Very worrying time, Nathan. He has underlying problems, Norman, unfortunately. He's touch of leukaemia uh, and, and one other problem. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed mm. uh, in a big way, uh, Nathan, you know. Yeah, you'd you be in touch on a fairly regular basis? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I haven't been in touch now. I didn't. I didn't ring his uh, his wife at all since yeah. last week. I think she's enough on her plate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, yeah, we've been in uh, every. We don't get as together as much as we should do, mm. Nathan. But when we do get together, uh, I'd be very, very close with Norman. It, it's as if, as if we've never uh, been apart. Yeah. You know, he's a top class, top class uh, individual. Yeah, for your golf day, was he a couple of years back? He was, yeah, yeah, yeah. He came over. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's one of the most humble people you could ever meet. Right. He, he, he never talk about himself and never bragging, down to earth, and uh, always, always grateful, uh, uh, Nathan, for what he did in football. Because mm. uh, when before Don Revy took over, the previous manager had released him. He'd right. come back. He came from Newcastle, yeah. uh, and he'd been released and. Uh, Don Reeve, you brought him back. Mm. And uh, Don loved him. Mm. Don loved him. We used to play golf. Uh, Peter Lorimer against uh, uh, Norman and uh, and uh, Don Reeve. And that would be on a Tuesday. We used to have Tuesday off and we'd no match midweek. And he'd come in on Monday and he'd say, are we taking them on tomorrow, son? <laughs> <laughs> to Norman, you know. And Norman used to be unbelievably... <laughs> Annoyed about it, you know. <laughs> he said, "I wish he wouldn't do that." And we'd say, "Ah, oh, Norman, <laughs> you're coming out with your dad tomorrow to play <laughs> golf with him." You know, but one of the best pros, right? I ever played with or against. Uh, uh, Every day, enthusiastic, training. Uh, he trained. He trained in, in the midweek as if he was playing in a match. Uh, Nathan, totally grateful for what he had because, as I said, he had been released. Don brought him back, and uh, he really worked at it. And he, he 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 made himself into one of the great players, in my opinion, the best defender I ever played with. No. Right, high high praise indeed. It was... Yeah, he was unlucky, Nathan, that he played at the same time as Bobby Moore. Mm. And Bobby Moore was a great player. Uh, and the the bigger the occasion for Bobby Moore, the better he played. No, he wasn't a week in week out player. West Ham weren't a great side. And they weren't ever going to win the league. So, yeah. and this is my opinion, Bobby Moore. He was a great player, but when he was like, he, he didn't have the same enthusiasm and drive that Norman had to do it every uh, day for for, the, for every day and the, and the matches. Yeah, Norman was was the same in every match. You know, I never saw, saw a day. I saw him having a few reasonably poor days, uh, but never for the want to try and. 
he was a great pro, and he, 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 in my opinion, he was a great, a great defender, Norman. Did he did he get a medal in '66? I know he was part of the squad, but didn't play. Well, they got a medal about 20, 30 years okay. later. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't give them out medals in those days. But he was, as I say, I think he got about twenty-seven caps. But uh, you know, he played at a time of Bobby Moore, and, and Bobby Moore was the captain, as you know, as we all know, of the the, the winning team in '66. But for attitude, uh, week in and week out, he, he was great. He used to have <laughs> he used to have a bit of a time. To, and Don loved him, but sometimes we, when we were playing, Norman would get the ball and he'd give it away. And Don used to say, Don, Norman, you get the ball. Give it to the lads that could play. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Bremner and myself. Yeah. You know? And Norman could play. You know, like if I, if I was play, when I played with Norman, if I was 40 yards away and Norman had his left foot, you'd get it straight to your feet. Right. He wasn't just a basher, you know. Norman could really play. But he didn't like that when Don used to say that to him, you know. Yeah, well, look, we wish him well uh, in the battle yes. that he faces over the coming days and weeks. And uh, hopefully we'll be talking about him again in the coming months. And uh, hopefully uh, everything uh, yeah, works Yeah, I hope so. I hope so, uh, Nathan, definitely. Uh, funny, he, he came to mind. I was uh, I don't know if you saw this article. Uh, it was in The Telegraph where they got Michael Oliver, current Premier League referee, to look back on the 1970 FA Cup final between Chelsea and Leeds, uh, a proper yeah. football match, as Michael Oliver described it, but also uh, he had to ref it like a modern-day match would be yeah. refereed, and uh, there was 11 red cards. Uh, I'm surprised. <laughs> I thought there'd be more. <laughs> <laughs> That's the time that was in it, uh, Norman. You know, like we, we had a few hard men, but so did Chelsea, Chopper Harris and Eddie McCready. Uh, Peter Osgood could handle himself. Uh, there was a lot of going on. But that's the way it was. You know, in those days, you had to com commit grievous bodily harm to get a yellow card. Hmm. Uh, it was just, that's the way, that, that, that was the time that was in it. Yeah, was uh, was that a Chelsea team full of Chopper Harris-type figures, or was, was he a standout? No, 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 no. They had some terrific players. The Charlie Cook, Peter Osgood was a terrific player. Uh, they, they, no, they had some... McCready was a terrific player at left-back. And, and Chopper was a good player. They were all... They were a very, very good team, Peter Benetti and God. Unfortunately, as we know, Peter Benetti passed away uh, this week. Uh, uh, mm. Nathan uh, was was a terrific goalkeeper for them. No, they, they had some... John Dempsey was a centre-half. No, they had a good, they had a good team. They, they, the Funny enough, they won the Cup and they won the Cup Winners' Cup that, at that particular time. But the, with the, as good a team as well. They never won the league, Nathan. Yeah. You know, they, they, were, they were regarded as being London boys, you know, they used to have a good time and that. And actually, they used to, they used to have a go at us uh, because we were supposed to be so committed. We, we, we were boring. Right. You know, but uh, we, we yeah, went boring. Yeah, the we went boring all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd imagine not. Uh, let, let's get into the Arsenal all-time eleven. I, I put up online earlier today that you were going to be doing this, and already it has sparked quite a bit of debate when you look at the sheer amount of talent they had, particularly in midfield and attacking positions. So I think it'll be interesting what your final selection is. Let's start, though, in goal. Uh, the options for Arsenal then over the last... And remember, we're going back all the way to 1960. The likes of Pat Jennings, Bob Wilson, David Seaman, Jens Lehmann... Who have you gone with? I've gone with David Seaman. Right. I love Pat. I love Pat, as you know, Pat mm. Jennings. Uh, I, but Pat, you know, wasn't there as long as, as uh, David Seaman. And, and Pat did have his great years of Spurs as well, but he was just a terrific goalkeeper. Bob Wilson uh, was terrific in 1971. They won the double in 1971, Nathan. They, 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 and we were, we were challenging them all the way uh, at that particular year at Leeds. But they did brilliantly. And Bob Wilson... Uh, was a major, major uh, player for them that mm. year. It was the best season he ever... He wasn't a great goalkeeper, Bob Wilson. But he was a great goalkeeper that year, Nathan. Right. That season. He was fantastic. Uh, but I've gone with David Seaman because he's, he, he gave tremendous uh, service to, to, to Arsenal. I'd imagine that was a tough decision because we spoke about Pat Jennings last week. He was obviously in your all-time Tottenham eleven. Yeah. And the way but you spoke enough, about him, just how good he was. I put, I put Pat in... And I, and I crossed them off. That's how close. Right. <laughs> I love I love Pat. I mean, I said to you last week, Pat was the best goalkeeper, in my opinion, of mm. that era. 
you know, whether, whether it be the, the, David Seaman. Or, but David Seaman was a terrific servant and they were very successful at that particular time as well. Yeah, it, like there have been so many great Arsenal teams throughout those eras. From as you mm. mentioned there, that team Bob Wilson played, the double winning team of 71, the team, a uh, real uh, exciting team full of Irish players in late 70s, early 80s, to the George Graham side that were so strong defensively, Arsene Wenger and the Invincibles. It's probably actually only in the last seven, eight years where there's been this real decline, where there aren't too many players in contention for this 11? No. Uh, and, and I'd have to say, like I said last, last couple of weeks when we were doing the teams, like, these, these players uh, that I've picked, um, mm. again, like in four or five years' time, we might have n another group of players coming in that would take their place. But I'm trying to balance it with the, with the service uh, that they've given to the, to the, to the club, Nathan. You know, there's a couple of players yeah. coming in for a year or two uh, were very very good players, but the players I've I, I picked, uh, and and this might be my principle in doing it every week so far, is the service that they actually gave to the club at a particular time. So let's go through your back four then, starting at right back. I'm starting with Peter Story. Okay. Now Peter Story became a midfield player, mm. uh, but he started when I played against him originally in that he he was a right back, and Eddie Gray was our left winger at Leeds, and I used to feel sorry for Eddie. Peter Story was a hard nut. Right. And he was well able to do it, Nathan. And I used to feel sorry for Eddie. And then he moved into midfield and was marking me, man marking me. Okay. <laughs> and after, after that, he was a very, he was quiet, quiet lad. Never said a dicky board on the pitch, Nathan. He had this mad stare, though. You know, he frightened the life out yeah. of you. Uh, but he could play. He was a great marker. He was the best, best marker I came across playing, man marking. Uh, in the middle of the field, played for England in the middle, played for England at right back as well. Yeah, I only met him once. We, I played in the, you know, the three versus the six when we were entering the common market, mm. and he was in that. And it's the first time I really got him on a social occasion. He still never said a word, <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't kick me. <laughs> that yeah, was okay. For once. Actually, he was a good lad overall, but uh, uh, he, he was he was a good player. He yeah. was a good, steady, steady, very good, steady player. Like, like yeah. the the obvious modern alternative would have been a Lee Dixon. It wouldn't be as hard as Story. Right. Uh, no, it wouldn't be as hard as Story. Story was, I say, he was the best. I mean, when he moved to midfield, now he was Ben Man, best man marker I came across. He could play, but he but he was a tough nut, uh, Nathan. So Peter Story is your right back. Who's your yeah. left back? Um, my left back is Bob McNabb. Right. You wouldn't. You might know about Bob McNabb played for them in their double winning team at that particular time. He played for England as well. He was, he was a, a steady player, good, uh, good footballer. Um, he came from Huddersfield. Actually, he made his... When I went to Leeds first, we played uh, Huddersfield within the second division. He made his debut against me. OK. And he did well. I heard he got a kick of the ball against me. He was a very, very good player. Understated. Got on with the job. Good lad. But, but uh, did the job well, Nathan. Again, left back must have been such a difficult selection because you think of the back four from George Graham, where you had Dixon on the right, yeah. Winterburn on the left, Ashley Cole, who for a lot of yeah. people is potentially the best left back of the Premier League era, and Kenny Sampson, who I was looking at earlier. Like Kenny Sampson, yeah. his first seven seasons at Arsenal was in the PFA Team of the Year every yeah. single season. It was, it was a very difficult pick, mm. uh, as, as, as you can imagine, and I do have all those players down: uh, uh, Ashley Cole and, and Lee Dixon and these players in my special. Special mention, for example, you know, yeah. and it's very difficult, Nathan. You know, like the, the, there would be people who would be fans of those particular players. Now I'm going back a while, and so Bob McNabb wouldn't be as wouldn't, wouldn't be as familiar to some of the players. I'm going back to the '60s and that, yeah. but he did play in, uh, regularly. In they did win the double, don't forget, mm. years ago when when uh, you know Bob Mc, Bob McNabb and Frank McClintock and these guys were playing in the team. Uh, which was a huge achievement because in those days, Nathan, there were more teams likely to win the league than now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And more there was more competition, to in my well. opinion, to to win uh, the, the league in those days than there is now because you've got the top six and it hasn't been out of the top six for years and years, you know? Mm. At that time, there was about six, seven, eight, actually between 66, I think, and 73. Seven different teams won the league. Yeah, it was... Certainly far more competitive. Time. And listen, it's obviously a, a testament to Bob McNabb that he gets selected ahead of those players as well. And yeah, he was just how he was. He was a good player, Nathan. Yeah. So your two centre halves, who did you go for? I went for David O'Leary. 
okay. as one of the centre half. Day was a very, very good player. Mm. Uh, got a, but got about the job quietly, but did it well. You know, I, I came across Dave, Dave. Actually, I capped Dave for, for uh, against England with Kevin Keegan playing, and he didn't give Keegan a kick. This was a friendly match, which yeah. we drew one one, and David was a, was a young lad coming into it. Didn't didn't he marked uh, Kevin Keegan out of the game? He was a he was a big lanky lad in those days, David. But he covered the ground brilliantly, very well balanced, very very quick, uh, and and used the, was good enough on the ball to use it well enough. You know, David was a top class player. Yeah, an incredible career at Arsenal, 18, 19 years, oh, yeah. selected week in, week out. Uh, as a fo- as a footballer, like when you looked at O'Leary, was it his defensive mindset or his footballing ability that you went with? Well, no, mostly his defensive, Nathan. Mm. When I'm looking at defence, I'd always look at them defensively first. Uh, but he was good enough on the ball to, to use it and use it well. And, 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 and play, when you're playing in a good team as a defender like David, you don't have to do too much on the ball, Nathan, because... Uh, you know, midfield players should look for it and make it. In other words, defenders win the ball; they give it to the guys that make position for it in the middle of the field. Midfield players, particularly, so they shouldn't be called on to be knocking forty or fifty yard passes. That's a bonus if you can do that. Yeah. If you go to Beckenbauer's time, he could do everything like that. Yeah. Now, David, David wasn't a, a terrific player in, in distributing the ball, but he was good enough not to lose the ball, which was the main thing. But so- defensively, excellent. So you have a lot of options uh, alongside him from Saul Campbell, Steve Bold, Martin Keown, Frank McClintock, Tony Adams. Who did you go for? I went for Tony Adams. Right. What separates him? Tony him? Adams was a really, really leading player. Mm. I think he was the best defender in, of his day, Nathan. He could use the ball okay. He wouldn't, he wouldn't be as good on the ball as David O'Leary. Uh, but he could defend, defend really well. And, and he was a real leader in that team. You know, if there was any tackling to be done, he was in there getting headers in, scored a few valuable goals for them as well. I think he was a top-class player. I have to mention Frank McClintock, by the way. Frank McClintock was a midfield player originally that went into into the central back to position and, again, captained the team when they won mm. the double. And I was very nearly putting him in the team, to be quite honest, Nathan. But certainly Adams... I would not leave out of a best ever Arsenal team. Yeah, and was part of you know the '89 team that won the league, the '91 team, and then continuing into the Wenger era. And in fact, maybe I think certainly for for my age group, you probably look at Adam slightly differently because of he had that time with Wenger when he got to show more of that footballing side of his game. Oh, definitely. Oh, he could play, Nathan. Like when you have a defender, like we talked about Norman Hunter earlier. Norman was a trippy defender, but he had enough ability to to, to come out. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. You don't expect defenders to be beaten players. Well, mm. some of them could, but there were few and far between. The main thing you're looking at, can he defend? Is he a good defender? And Adams said that, but when Adams was on the ball, he didn't give the ball away. He could use it, but he wasn't hitting 40 and 50 yard passes. But the main thing was defending, and he was he was a real defender. All right, so the goalkeeper, David Seaman, a back four, Peter Storey, David O'Leary, Tony Adams and Bob McNabb. We might actually take a quick break, John, before we get in to okay. the midfielders and the attackers. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership Since Jeff and Heskey Moncrief On the line is the first Vice President of the European Parliament Mairead McGuinness Mairead, good afternoon to you Good afternoon and I'm glad this isn't a video call Because of the makeup issue referenced <laughs> Right, are you in your tracky bottoms as well? Well, I think people are two halves at the moment. There's the professional, you know, head and shoulders, and then there's the rest. Yes, right. <laughs> Fair enough. Moncrief. With the all-new Dacia Duster. Weekdays from 2pm on News Talk. At Bank of Ireland, we want our customers and colleagues to stay safe and well. Now more than ever, it's important to know that your financial well-being is our priority. We have a range of supports available for our personal and business customers with easy online applications. Our dedicated staff are working to support you, but if you're cocooning or self-isolating at home, you can now nominate a family member or trusted friend to do your banking for you. We're also giving a 1 million euro emergency fund to support our communities right now. To find out more, visit bankofireland.com. Take care, Bank of Ireland. Bank of Ireland is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Big things happen when you're being supported. At FBD Insurance, we get that. Our car protect sale is now on at fbd.ie. FBD Insurance. Support. It's what we do. 
Acceptance criteria, terms and conditions apply. Underwritten by FBD Insurance PLC. FBD Insurance Group Limited, trading as FBD Insurance, is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. In these uncertain times, we discover the best in each other and in our communities. Your local community pharmacy is working hard, in difficult circumstances, to supply the medicines you need and the advice you trust. We are asking people to be understanding of small delays and, if possible, phone ahead to make arrangements for collecting your prescription. Your local community pharmacy. Always here for you. Brought to you by the Irish Pharmacy Union. Your local Experts Electrical store is just one of 67 family-owned stores in communities nationwide. Wherever you live, we're here to help you. Whatever you need, essential home appliances, local store opening times, advice or delivery options. Visit expert.ie for the latest updates. We're Expert Electrical. We're here to help you. In these difficult times, many businesses are still very much open for business and still need to communicate with their customers. Radio can help. Right now, it's playing an even bigger role keeping people in Ireland informed and entertained. And the latest technology means that even with social distancing, radio ads can still be made and broadcast safely. Radio. Business as usual. Even when it's not business as usual. For more information, email info at fmjunction.ie. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership Since Jeff and Heskey You're welcome back, it's Thursday's Off The Ball Nathan with you and John Giles on the line as well Picking his all-time Arsenal 11 He's gone for David Seaman in goals A back four of Peter Storey, David O'Leary, Tony Adams and Bob McNabb Let's get on to the midfielders, John, and I don't envy you because there have been so many wonderful <laughs> midfielders for Arsenal through the years. I was saying earlier on that you could literally just go with a Perez, Petit, Vieira, Overmars, and nobody would have an issue until you start thinking of, well, where does Liam Brady fit in? So what, what formation have you gone for first? I've gone for 4-3-3. Three, three. So three midfielders. Three midfielders, <laughs> yeah. Three who have you gone with? I've gone with uh, Fabregas. Right. That's Fabregas. I think I think for a period in England he was the best midfield player mm. in the Premiership. Uh, night. Incre- he, he could get on the ball. He could, you know, especially in the middle of the midfield, he could dictate it. Uh, I think it was a shame that he, he left Arsenal, or maybe I don't know whether he had to leave at that particular time. You know, Wenger brought him in, as we know, uh, but I think he became a top class player at, for the few years that he was at Arsenal. And incredible the way at such a young age he was that player that you talk about with the technique, with the ability to control games from midfield. Like pretty pretty much played a full season at seventeen in the centre midfield for a brilliant Arsenal team. Yeah, he was. He was. I think. I. I don't think he marched on to greatness. I think mm. maybe leaving Ar- leaving Arsenal stopped that, Nathan. Uh, but I think he had the ability to do it. As you say, at seventeen, he had all the right ideas. He had the technique to do it. He got better with Arsenal. Uh, and then I think they they they, they were following a, a program, or Wenger had to follow a program. There was finances involved, and he left. I think he was marching on to greatness at that particular time. The fact that maybe he didn't fully get to that level of greatness, and as good as he was, and he, he didn't really enjoy much success. There was an FA Cup win. He was part of a team that got to a Champions League final. But unlike a lot of the names, even the ones I was mentioning there, like he, ne- he never was able to bring them to a league title. Did any part of that come into your reckoning? Um, no, because I think that was it was it was beyond his control. I think if they, you know when they were going for the new stadium, uh, uh, Nathan. Mm. I think uh, you know the the, the, the future uh, change for Arsenal. I, I don't think uh, Wenger could then. I think Wenger went for the policy of um, the big stadium, the stadium being the main concern that he couldn't afford the best players. He had to sell Fabregas. He had to do things that at the time Alex Ferguson didn't have to do. For example. You know, Alex Ferguson wasn't bothered about the new stand and anything else. He was getting the money to buy the best players available. And I think the Wenger, uh, with the wage, the, you know, the wage structure, and that all changed to to uh, accommodate the new stadium. That's when they parted. They parted ways, Wenger and uh, and, and and Ferguson. Uh, Ferguson wasn't bothered about the new stand. They're doing. The, he was mm. better about getting the next, the, the best players in. I think Wenger approached it in a different way. He, he said. I'm the manager of the club. It's not just the playing uh, uh, situation or a manager of. I'm a manager of the club. And he, he went a certain way to make sure that they had the money to build a new stadium. He stopped buying the best players and he had to sell a few players, Nathan. That was the difference at that time. I think had he been in the same position as, uh, attitude as Ferguson, 
he would have bought good players surrounding Fabregas. But that stopped. Yeah. And uh, he, he, then, he then couldn't compete with Manchester United. So Fabregas, the first midfielder in. Who else have you gone for? I've gone for Patrick Vieira. Straightforward selection? Oh, no problem. Mm. He was one of the best, Nathan. And he was a warrior. Uh, he could play. He could score goals. Uh, and these, this was the time when Van Wenger first came to the club. You see, I think when, when any manager comes to a club, you usually have you spot two or three players, Nathan, in other places or maybe in clubs you were with that you could get. And he certainly did that. He, he, he got Vieira and, and, and he got Henri in two, two, two at least at that particular time where I think, I think they both were at Juventus were they? and they weren't doing very well. Mm. So he got them in. But Vieira was a real player. He could do everything. He, he could tackle, get stuck in. He could play. He could score a few goals for you. So he was a top, really top-class midfield player. Yeah, yeah. And the rivalry with Roy Keane just added to it. Oh, well, they, well they, 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 I think he was trying to bully somebody, Fiera, which he would. I think he tried to bully anybody when they were coming down the pit. Yeah, and, Gary Neville. And, and Gary Neville. He wasn't a bad judge then, was he? <laughs> <laughs> and Keane stuck up for him. Yeah. You know, like Keane, Keane wouldn't. Keane was captain of the team, and he wouldn't bow. He wouldn't bow to anybody either. So there was a right battle between those two. You know, they were two great players. But Vieira, I think, was a great player, and a huge signing for for Arsenal that day, and influence at that particular time. So Fabregas and Vieira, who's the final selection? I've gone for Liam Brady. All right, I was I was starting to get a little bit worried yeah. there. Uh, yeah, we were getting it. We had to get something beautiful in there. <laughs> and Liam, I would always regard as a beautiful player. Mm. Easy on the eye, Nathan. You know, get on his left foot. He could dribble. He could go past people. Get the pass in. I thought Liam was a wonderful player. Was he a midfielder? Was he a midfielder who was effective in every game? Yeah. Well, he played left-hand side of midfield. Mm. I don't think he was capable of playing in the Vieira's position as the, the, the general of midfield. Liam, I don't think Liam had that in him. But he had this beautiful approach that you get the ball out to Liam uh, and he'll do something on it because he could beat players. Now, you don't get many midfield players now or then who could go past people. And it's the most, sometimes the most effective thing in the game. You go past your opposition. And Liam could do that. You know, he was a beautiful player. He, he wasn't a warrior like Fiera. And he was suited to the left hand side midfield. I don't think he was able to play middle of midfield to dictate the game. So you had to get the ball out to Liam and then he could really do his stuff. He obviously do it, do it brilliantly. Yeah, he, he obviously and had... easy on the eye, Nathan. Mm. You know, easy on the eye. When the beautiful control, he had a good swerve. He could he could get a good shot in. He could make a pass. So uh, you know, he was great down that left hand side of uh, midfield. Yeah, he was a scorer of brilliant goals. Yes, yes, he was. He wasn't a regular scorer because mm. he was a midfield player, and he and, and he wasn't a great tackler, but he did his best. He did. He, he had an honest goal at it. You know. But you, you could live with Liam for that because once he got on the ball, he didn't lose it, Nathan. Mm. And he could beat players, he could make goals, he could score a few goals. Now, Liam was a top-class player. What was he like in training? He was OK. Yeah. Yeah, he, he had this style about him that he looked like uh, he was struggling a bit. But once he got on the ball, and then he could turn on this pace Nathan, from nowhere to go past people. It's just the way he, he, he looked, you know. He was sort of casual looking mm. in his... In his uh, his general general running, but once he got on the ball, you know he he, he turned from the the ugly duckling into this uh, beautiful swan, <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautiful on the ball, beautiful to watch, easy on the eye, and very very effective. You're saying all the right things if he's listening in, anyways, John. <laughs> I fell out with him last week. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait till you're doing your but Arsenal one with him. We're pal, we're pal, you're, you're back. Now. You're back again. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so your midfield is Fabregas, Vieira and Brady. i, yeah. I got to say, I'm surprised Perez isn't in there. I, I would have thought that Perez was very much your type of player. Well, he was, Nathan, but again, you, you, you know, you, you, you've got three picks. Mm. And there's, there's, Who are you leaving out? You know, lots of people listen and say, well, why, was, why wasn't he in? Why wasn't he in? Why? It, it's a very, it's very difficult job. Uh, no, not a, it's not a job. I, mean, <laughs> I, I enjoy it and then having to chat about it. But I can understand people saying, well, he was my favourite. He was my favourite. And you, 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 never, you don't. You very seldom get two people having the same, same yeah. uh, sharing the same opinion over football, Nathan. You know that's why people are interested. I'm giving you my pick. Uh, a lot of other, a lot of people will have different picks altogether. I suspect. And I understand that. You know. I suspect a lot of people might uh, go along with your picks for your front three. Do you want to run through them? Yeah, I've got uh, Ian Wright. Mm. 
who I think was a terrific player. What a career he had! Night he came in from came in from late uh, non-league football quite late uh, to Crystal Palace. I think he was about 26, 27, 28 when he moved to Arsenal. But what a difference he made! And he was he was absolutely brilliant. I, 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 my own opinion on when he went to play for England, when he did play for England, he didn't play quite as well as he could have played. I think he was too anxious to please Nathan. Right. That was my opinion with England. But Arsenal, he was very comfortable. He scored brilliant goals. He was an absolute brilliant goal scorer and worked quite hard as well. I'd have, I wouldn't have any doubts about putting him in the team. I, I thought he was terrific for them. Yeah, at the, uh, time, he, uh, at the time he ended up in their, their all-time leading scorer. And I, I, it's funny to say it there, I hadn't realised he was, you know, he was 27, 28 when he went to Arsenal, like to go yeah. on and score that many goals at that stage of your career. Yeah, and good goals, mate. Well, mm. I mean, there's no such thing as a bad goal. Mm. But, I mean, he, he, the way he did, he did he scored a lot of goals on his own. You know, going past people and chipping them in. And, and you know, he was, he was a top-class striker for Arsenal. There's no doubt about that. He was really, really good. And a good attitude, too. Yeah, so Ian Wright is in there. Who's alongside him? I've got uh, uh, Thierry Henry. Mm. Again, straightforward? I, oh, yeah. I think he was one of the greats, to be honest. And funny enough, when he went to Arsenal, I don't know if you remember now, and he played on the right yeah. wing a lot. I thought he was terrible. <laughs> I did. I tell him, what's he doing in the team? He's hopeless. And then he moved into centre-forward and leading the attack, and he became one, what, a, what a goal scorer he was. He was. He's a big lad, as we know, quick, great balance, great dribbler, uh, great shot in his right foot and finishing well. Oh, he was a, he was a real a real player, a real player. Yeah, both a score of great goals and a score of lots of goals, like six yeah. straight seasons where he scored 24 and over in the Premier League. Yeah, he was brilliant, Nathan. I think he, he became one of the great goal scorers in the Premier League. Mm. No doubt about that. He was, he was terrific. And he could do them on his own as well. You know, you see, I see some of his goals now, even on the telly that they go back, and he and he's, he's scored in all sorts of goals. He's chipping them in. He's beating players. He's gone and he was very quick, big, big, strong lad, but very particularly quick and great on great on his right side, particularly. Now he was he was he was some goal scorer. So Henri and Rice, who's the final member of your yeah, team? I've gone for Dennis Bergkamp. All right, Bergkamp was easy going, looking fella. Nate and looked like he wasn't bothered at times, hmm. uh, but but he couldn't half finish and and dribble and and and. Uh, Bring people into the game. You know, his he's, 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 he's control of the ball generally was, was really top class. Always had time and space for himself and scored his fair share of goals for Arsenal. Yeah, and a tough nut as well, it always seemed. Like, could take the physical stuff. Oh, he could take it, yeah. He, he, he didn't dish it out very much, but, he, he, but the main thing is for players like that is to be able to take mm. it and come back for more. And he could do that in his own, in his own way. I mean, some lads lose their head he kicked back and that. He didn't do that. He, was, he didn't seem to get excited about anything, to be quite honest. But it didn't stop him from playing. When anybody was giving him a hard time, it, which is what happens to the real players, they come back for more. Yeah. Uh, Nathan. And he did it in his own way. They, couldn't, they wouldn't kick him out of the game. Yeah, it's not a bad front three right, Henri Bergkamp. Is there honourable mentions you want to run through quickly? I have a few, uh, Nathan. You know, there's maybe a lot. Alan Smith, and certainly Frank McClintock, mm. Martin Keown. Bob Wilson, I've mentioned, Lee Dixon, Kenny Sanson, Steve Bald, Ray Kennedy, Overmars, uh, Van Persie, Radford. Um, and that's about it, uh, Nathan. You know, they, uh, that, that's quite a fair. Maybe left out, left out one or two, but yeah. they had some great players over the years, Arsenal. And I can tell you, it wasn't easy for, for, to give you my team. Anyway, I'm, I'm, if you, I'm sure there will be plenty of others, Arsenal supporters or football supporters, say, I don't know what the hell he's picking him for. And then... <laughs> And they have their own team, and that, that, that's football. Well, that's the fun of it as well. Yeah. So the team, David Seaman in goals, back four, Peter Storey, David O'Leary, Tony Adams, Bob McNabb in midfield, Cesc Fabregas, Patrick Vieira and Liam Brady, and the front three of Ian Wright, Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp. If you're doing this with Liam over the coming weeks, John, just, just leave him out and just see what the reaction is. <laughs> I turned. <laughs> <laughs> After what happened last time. John, great stuff as always. Thanks a lot for your time. We'll thanks, talk to you again next thanks, Thursday. Nathan. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power The greatest football partnership Since Jeff and Heskey Join that conversation On Facebook and Twitter At Irish Life Health We believe everyone needs a healthy mind As well as a healthy body To embrace life's changes That's why all our hospital plans Offer independent professional counselling Talk to us about health insurance today We know Irish Life We are Irish Life Health Service provided by LifeWorks by Morneau Chappelle Available to age 16 plus And where it can be appropriate